I'm going to talk a little bit about blueberry production um, budgeting. And I'm going to start by introducing business planning as a whole, the idea of planning and evaluating. Then I'll shift into where enterprise budgets fit as a tool for um, planning and evaluating and business planning. And finally, I'll go through an example of um, a blueberry budget and um, basically how those could be useful for uh, your operation. So starting out with planning and evaluating, it's important to outline the goals your operation has. Um, you know, different operations will have different goals. Some, for some, the goal is pure profit. Um, that might be a short-term goal. It might be a long-term goal. Others, it might be more of a hobby type of a thing with any type of agricultural production. So outlining your goals first is important. Second, looking at how you're going to take your resources, um, how you're going to transform the factors of production, talking about land, labor, capital, um, other inputs into a product. So having a good plan about where you're going to get those inputs from and how you're going to um, actually grow the blueberries is important. Lastly, how you're going to market the product. There are a lot of different opportunities there, whether you're talking about um, large scale production and selling um, through wholesale or some other channel like that, or selling locally at farmers markets, understanding what potential price points are for your products is crucial. And then lastly, the most important thing though is the what if. You know, you can have a good plan, but being able to work off of that plan and um, understand that things might not always happen as you draw them up. So what's gonna happen if prices fall by 10%? What's gonna happen if fertilizer prices go up? What's gonna happen if um, yield is higher or lower than expected? and how will those affect the bottom line of the operation. Now, in terms of planning and evaluating, it's always a good idea to use your resources. And one of those is just having a situ situational awareness of what's going on in the world. And so one of the important aspects there is the overall economy. And so, you know, keeping track of things like the GDP, um, what's the strength of the economy? How will that affect the market you're selling into? You know, for blueberries, it, really depends are those more of are you selling into a luxury good market something where if the economy crashes and people are losing some of their discretionary income are they going to decrease their consumption or is it something that's going to be pretty stable year round so that's just one thing to consider another is inflation just an overall macroeconomic indicator you know fruit and vegetable prices have been up about 6% over the past year so how's that going to affect where your operation is going to price um, the product in the end? And, you know, going back to the last presentation, talked a lot about um, harvesting mechanically just because of high labor costs. So understanding what's happening in the labor market is especially important with fruit and vegetable production. Um, they tend to have about 40 percent, 30 to 40 percent of costs being labor related. So um, Understanding what's going on with the unemployment rate is a, a good time to hire workers. Is the unemployment rate low as it is now where it might be hard to hire workers in um, thinking about adjusting to some other type of um, labor or being able to mechanically harvest or something like that, considering whether those are possibilities is always important. Now, switching on from overall economic indicators to the industry as a whole, it can be important to think about what's your competition look like. So from a blueberry um, perspective, we'd seen consumption increase about four times um, from about half a pound per person to about two pounds per person annually over the past couple decades. And so we've seen since from 2010 to 2019, um, we've increased our imports of blueberries to meet this increased consumption. So it used to be a lot of imports from Chile, and that's still the case, but a lot of other countries there as well. And all those have seen increases in what they export to us throughout the entire year. And um, on the other side, in terms of what we're producing in the U.S., we've seen blueberry production really increase, um, both in times of the timing so it used to be we'd import pretty much exclusively early parts of the year, late parts of the year, where other countries had their harvests and um, were producing their most. Um, nowadays, we've increased the amount of time we're producing over the past few years. 
but we've also increased the peak of our production throughout those summer months too, especially in the Southeast, which can be shown by those red bars increasing um, over that decade. Now we've looked at some of the overall market scenarios, but the most important tool you can use for your operation is budgets. And those are important because we can take the information we have from what we expect to happen to the market. If we expect prices to go up, we can play around with what will happen in our budget with there, um, with that. If we expect labor prices will go up or down, we can plug that into our budget and see how it will affect our operation as a whole. So looking into enterprise budgets, the enterprise budget is basically a summary of projected income and expenses from producing a good. And so we generally express those either per acre or per unit of acre produced. And so we can think about it as if we have this, um, this operation where we're producing blueberries, we might think, well, on one acre of production, what are the total expenses I'm going to have to incur to produce a certain amount of, of products? And then what's the value of that product when I sell it um, and I market it in the end? And looking at differences there to tell whether the operation is profitable or not. Another way of looking at it is per unit produced. So thinking of um, I'm producing, let's say, 7,000 pounds per acre. Looking at all the costs there, you can say, well, what's the cost of producing one, plant, one pound of blueberries on this operation? And so you can look at it from that perspective and say, for instance, maybe it costs $2.50 per pound to produce. And then that can help inform a marketing plan later on. Maybe you're weighing different farmer's market options where you think you can get different prices at a market that's farther away. Um, you're, you might be able to increase from say $2.50 to $3. Well, you have your overall cost per blueberry, so you know what the price you have to sell it on to break even is, and you can kind of consider different markets and say, well, if I add 30 cents per pound in transportation costs, will it be worth it to sell at a location that's further away? And so that's sort of one of the ways these enterprise budgets come in handy. Now, what is an enterprise budget? In, in essence, it's a planning guide. You know, we have rough estimates of what the total costs of production will be. Um, really, we want to include all the costs that will go into the operation um, for producing the, the given good. Um, with budgets, we use recommended management practices. So you might think of those as extension recommendations. They're considered to be better than average. So they're things that we think most people would consider to be reasonable. You know, so um, not every producer is gonna do things the exact same way. So there are gonna be differences across operations, but our goal is if we hand these budgets to a producer, they might look at them and say, yeah, this isn't right for my operation, but I think it's reasonable for a large number of producers. Now, what enterprise budgets are not? First, they're not gonna be perfect. They're not gonna be exact. So they're not gonna account for every single item. In a perfect world, they would, but in reality, they're not gonna account for every nail, screw, roll of duct tape, um, everything like that. They're also not gonna apply to every situation or operation, just because there's so many different ways of doing things. You know, Whether we're talking about from a widespread um, types of irrigation, um, organic, conventional, um, different types of pesticides use, timing of treatments, number of treatments per year. Those are things that will differ quite a bit. And so one enterprise budget isn't going to be able to capture all of those changes. They're also not a production guide or a how-to guide. Um, there's plenty of opportunities, um, plenty of resources on the ACES website that talk more about how to produce certain things. An enterprise budget isn't going to tell all of that, but it's going to try to put dollar figures on all of those production guide um, type of expenses, at least the ones that we feel are most representative to our farms. And lastly, they're not a tax advisor, although I will point out that a lot of the records that are important for taxes could also be useful in creating your own enterprise budgets. And lastly, importantly, they're not going to reflect entertainment values or hobbies. So, 
you know, um, the enterprise budget is going to tell you basically whether an enterprise is profitable or not, but it's not going to tell you whether you should be in that enterprise. So for instance, you might find that a certain um, operation is losing money. It doesn't mean they should get out of it necessarily if there is that entertainment value, that hobby, um, that enjoyment that the producer is getting out of it, even if it's not profitable. Um, you know, it's not my job to tell anyone to get out of it. The enterprise budget just tells um, the bottom line, or in other words, the expense that the person would be paying for that hobby, which is always good information to know. Now, why budget? First, is to decide what enterprises to have. So from a planning perspective, you might think, is a blueberry operation good for me or some other operation? Or would that, be, would that enterprise be a good thing to add to my, um, to my farm? And so you could look at existing budgets and say, how does it fit in? You know, especially with blueberries being a longer term um, thing where you have the you know, management costs over several years, but also the establishment upfront costs, being able to understand how that will fit into uh, an entire farm is a good thing to know. But also for evaluating, being able to see once you have planted, um, harvested, sold the product, being able to understand, was this enterprise profitable? Is it a good idea for me to expand this um, enterprise, maybe expand to um, more acreage or uh, something like that, or is it something where maybe it's not the most profitable one, and so you might think about either scaling back or just maintaining where you are. And so having a solid enterprise budget can help you with those types of decisions. Lastly, I mentioned the what ifs. So you might have management changes or market changes, such as a 10% increase in yields. You know, if nothing else changes, you're not changing your costs at all, you know that will increase your your revenues per acre and increase your profits. But the question is how much? And having a solid enterprise budget can tell you that. You know, if you have a 10% increase in fertilizer prices, um, that will reduce your bottom line. So looking at how that will affect your operation is there. Likewise, um, a $2 per gallon increase in fuel prices, understanding how much of an impact that would have on the operation is important information to know. Or, you know, going back to something else, a 20 cent per pound increase in blueberry prices, understanding how that will increase your revenues as a whole and how that will increase profitability um, is good too. So being able to consider all sorts of factors that might change um, from the planning stage to what actually happens, um, having an enterprise budget can help with that process and make it a lot easier. Now the enterprise budget format, typically you have, um, first you have your revenues, which you have the prices you're selling your product for times the amount of product you're selling. You have the variable costs, which you can think of as being the cash costs or out of pocket expenses. And so in general, whether you produce or not, you're, um, that's gonna affect what your variable costs are. Um, and then you have your income, above variable costs, so looking at whether you're able to cover your variable costs just with the amounts of product that you're selling. And that's important because we tend to think of that from an economic perspective as being the decision point as to whether you can produce in the short run. So if your income isn't covering your variable costs, then um, it might be important to think about whether the operation or whether that enterprise is viable for the operation. You then have your fixed costs, and those are all costs that will be incurred whether or not you produce. So you can think of it as maybe you have um, equipment, machinery that you've purchased, stuff like that, that you have certain costs for overhead expenses that even if you don't produce a single blueberry, you're still gonna have to pay to um, maintain or, or upkeep that equipment, um, taxes, stuff like that. Then there's usually returns to risks, management, whatever is included in the budget. So that's sort of our measure of profitability there. So that will give a number of whether your revenues are able to cover your costs. And then lastly, we like to look at a sensitivity table. Again, getting into that what if analysis, 
looking at what happens if prices increase or revenue or um, quantities produced fall. So kind of looking at yield and prices and how those will affect profits. Now enterprise budgets are for specified time periods and production practices, um, keeping in mind the production cycles differ across these budgets. So if you've used any of our um, like tomato budgets or in the past we've had um, strawberry budgets, then um, some of those are for a single growing season or for a single year. Other ones will have longer cycles. So for example, goats, blueberries, um, pine trees or um, black walnuts, those are gonna be long-term budgets, um, sometimes two or three years up to maybe 20 years overall, just depending on what the production cycle is for the crop in, in, in question. Now, another thing to consider is with enterprise budgets, you must be paid. So accounting for your own labor in the budget is important too. Uh, make sure any operator labor is included as a line in the budget. And use your own numbers. So I'll go through an example shortly, um, but on the ACES website, we have several budgets for fruits and vegetables, as well as row crops and um, cattle budgets. And they all have places where you can input your own numbers. And so since, you know, going back to what I said earlier, budgets are a good general guide, but the way to perfect them as much as possible is to put in your own information from your operation to make them as accurate as possible. And that will help um, with any time you wanna use these budgets, having your own information, um, especially if you're at a point where you have uh, records available to input, those will really help with uh, decision-making in the future. Now, one other thing I'll mention is you wanna watch your units with budget. Some items are gonna be on a per gallon basis. Some are like labor might be per hour or machinery use might be per hour. Um, certain things might be per plant, you know, if we're talking about pruning or stuff like that, some harvest figures might be per plant. Others will just be general costs as a per acre basis. And um, some products might be sold on a per pound basis. So within one budget, there are gonna be a lot of different units. So making sure if you're inputting your own values that you know which in which units you're you're putting in to make sure it's accurate. Now I'm going to go through an example. Now I'm going to steal the University of Georgia's um, blueberry budget. We have an ACES blueberry budget is currently under development, and so we're hoping to have that one out pretty soon. Where um, I've talked with Jesse Rowe, and she's putting that one together and um, looking to um, test it out with farmers to make sure it's reasonable right now. So instead of sharing that work in progress, decided to go to our neighbors and um, take what they have. And what they have is a multi-year budget with establishment in year one um, production over several other years and then reaching full uh, scale production at around year four. And so looking at this budget, the first thing is sort of everything is going to be on a, it's assuming one acre of production. So think of it on a per acre basis. Um, and an irrigated budget there. So the first step there looking at um, the revenues, they do, what they show is a range of plausible values, which I, I like that approach because you have, you know, sort of the median, you might think of that as the expected value of, you know, both 7,000 pounds per acre and a price of $2.75 per pound. But they also have sort of a worst case scenario. Suppose you have 5,600 pounds per acre and a best case scenario where you go up to 8,400 pounds per acre and worst case price scenarios and um, of $2.20 and a best case of $3.30. So that sort of gets into the what if scenario just on the revenue side. Um, but that's really useful there for calculating what the total revenue could be for this operation. Next, looking at variable costs. These are, this is sort of the bulk of the budget where we have um, most of our expenses are gonna be variable, um, especially if we're looking at a longer term horizon. So what I like to do with these variable costs is if you are in a situation where at the end you're looking at it and you're seeing that the enterprise isn't profitable, one step can be to look at the variable costs and seeing if there's any way to 
um, lessen some of the main costs. So looking at this one, you see maybe fungicides jump out to you at about $388 per acre in cost. That's a pretty high expense. Um, pruning, large expense there. Harvesting is a huge expense. So thinking of, is there a way to make these expenses come down at all? <clears throat> now with these blueberry budgets, they do separate them into um, the pre-harvest variable costs, this top portion there from um, fertilizers, weed control, insect and disease control and pruning to the post-harvest variable costs, which include harvesting and marketing costs, as well as a combination of all variable costs um, shown on the bottom line there. Lastly, we have our fixed costs, and those might include things like tractors and equipment on a per acre basis, um, looking at an expense of about $1,600 per acre in equipment, overhead and management, um, the dollar expense there, um, the last column just showing the total expense per acre at around $255 per acre and irrigation expense. Um, the fixed cost for irrigation in addition to um, the, the actual water consumption cost, but looking at $300 per acre as a fixed cost there. Now, once we have all of our costs, we have both our uh, fixed costs and our total costs, we can combine those. Our fixed costs and our variable costs, we can combine them for our total costs. We also might want to look at how our returns are expected to compare to our costs. So going back to before, we have, um, again, with this blueberry budget, it's a long-term budget. So year one, we're looking at the establishment. So our yield there is zero because we're not really looking to harvest anything that first year. Second year, we're starting to produce a little bit. So looking at a, a yield much less than what it's going to be overall, but still some harvest there, year three, still looking at a lower yield than what we'll see in future years, but by year four, getting up to um, that sort of expected yield over time. Now, I'll look at the first red box there, return over variable cost. That'll tell you how your returns compared to the cash expenses or the variable costs that you're putting out, um, or your operating costs, in other words. And so we see that the first two years, we're not able to cover those variable costs at all just because of those um, large upfront costs that come in with regards to establishment. But once we get past year three and onward, we're starting to be in a situation where our returns are covering our variable costs. And so generally they're in a good, um, in a spot where production um, should be viable um, there on in the short run. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're looking at our profits or return over total costs, so the last column there, we see huge losses, again, the first four years, but then after that, we're starting to get in a situation where we are able to cover our total costs, and so we are becoming profitable. And so in this example, we'd see somewhere around year nine or 10 is where our um, overall returns or our revenues will start to cover our long-term total costs. So in essence, the losses we took on the first three years, those will all be overcome by year nine or 10, according to this budget. So from a planning perspective, being able to say, look, there's about $10,000 in establishment costs per acre. At what point am I gonna be able to recover that cost? That's kind of one of the things a budget can really uh, do for you there. Break-even analysis, that's another thing to look at. We might be thinking about from a cost perspective, how much um, do I need to sell the product for to be able to make a profit? And so I'm looking at break-even costs. You can think of those as the maximum costs such that your revenue will still cover your total cost. Or in other words, your profit will be, uh, you won't be making a loss. And so I'll focus on the second to last line there, the total budgeted cost per pound. We're looking at about $2.63 in total costs per pound of blueberries, such that you could still break even. Another way to look at that is to think, okay, well, let's suppose all of our costs are accurate. Those are all going to happen. What's the lowest yield I could have where I would still break even? And so the bottom line, the break even yields at uh, 6,706 pounds per acre there, showing that that's the lowest yield you could have if all of our costs hold true 
that you could still break even. Um, also, supposing that prices stay the same at that three dollars and I think it was thirty cents uh, clip or two dollars seventy five cent clip there. And the last thing we like to look at is our sensitivity analysis of prices and yields. So we might think, you know, our, our costs are pretty good. We don't think we can do too much to change those. So let's suppose our costs stay fixed or stay, stay as we said they would be. Let's just see what happens if we change our prices and yields. So looking at this, um, this matrix here, um, on going down the columns from 2.2 to 3.3, those are different prices per pound of blueberries and going across from 8,400 to 5,600, looking at different yield levels. And so what they do in this budget is they look at essentially all combinations there. The, the colors in red will be the net returns. So in other words, the returns over our total costs. And so the red figures suggest that we're making a loss there. The ones in the black means that we are profitable. And so in essence, we see if yields get low enough, we're pretty much always going to be uh, losing money. Um, if prices get low enough, we're going to be losing money. But um, looking at the places where if we do have increased yields, or even if we do have a decreased yield, but prices manage to increase at that time, see that we are still able to uh, make money in that enterprise. And they also do a good job of showing the percent chance there. That's sort of a probability of those events occurring. Um, so, or a cumulative probability there. So that can kind of help us um, take into account risk assessment and what might happen um, there in our operation. So, you know, in conclusion, enterprise budgets are useful for planning, evaluating, and also considering those what if scenarios. You know, whether we're talking about increased prices, um, whether it's a price of the blueberries we're selling or the prices of the inputs we're using to produce, just looking at how those might affect the operation in the end. But most importantly, using numbers from your own operation will really help improve the accuracy of the budget. So, um, you know, a lot of people don't like to do this, keeping good records. It's not the most fun part of having a business or a um, having a a farm, but it is really important to keep those um, accurate records. So you can put in those labor expenses, those um, pruning expenses, stuff like that as accurate as possible. So you can have the best possible budget and help you make decisions later on. I wanna thank you all for watching and my contact information's here, but I'd be happy to take any questions if there are any.